Hard pass, hard pass. All right, so today I'm doing a full face of makeup with products that Amazon recommended that I buy. These are like the products at the very top when you search for something on Amazon that pops up as a sponsored product. This video is not sponsored by Amazon. These are just sponsored products by the brands that pay for these ads. So I basically just went on Amazon, searched different words, and whatever popped up as the sponsored product, I purchased. The majority of the products that Amazon recommended were really affordable. I don't know if they just think I'm completely broke based on the amount of money I spend on their site. They didn't recommend anything high end. So this is a pretty affordable look. I thought this would be fun to see one, what Amazon recommends that I do buy and two, just try products that I might not necessarily have tried yet or been inspired myself to pick up. So I haven't seen anyone do this exact video yet, but I was inspired by Sophia Nygaard. She hasn't done a makeup one, I don't think, or an Amazon one, but she does similar videos where she buys products from Facebook ads, Snapchat ads, Instagram ads, things like that, buys whatever they tell her to. So I was watching some of those videos and thought how fun would that be to do that with makeup? And what better site to do that with than Amazon? love of my life where I spend 99.9% .9 of my money. So if you guys are excited for this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I hope you enjoy while you're watching. If you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Here we go. Amazon sponsored products. <clears throat> All right. It's first thing in the morning, Super Bowl Sunday when I'm filming this. So the primer that was recommended to me by Amazon was the Maybelline Master Prime Blur and Redness Control Primer. Great clipping job. So I was excited about this one because I don't think I've ever actually tried this primer. I do have a lot of redness on my face, especially from the Accutane. The lights kind of like make my skin look a little bit less red than it does in real life, but it definitely is pretty red, especially if I'm like outside in the cold, it gets red super quickly. We'll see if this actually controls some of the redness. It doesn't smell the best. It feels very lightweight, not the most moisturizing. My skin is on the normal to dry side right now. Yeah, it actually feels a little bit like drying. As far as redness control, I don't feel like it did a whole lot. So I probably wouldn't use this as like a color corrector product. It's a very light green color. And when you blend it in, it basically just disappears and turns clear. So since my skin feels a bit dry right now, I'm gonna take the setting spray that was sponsored on Amazon. And I actually already had this one, so that was exciting. This is the Bella Jade Makeup Setting Spray. I've done a couple other Amazon videos, makeup videos, and I tested this in one of them. Haven't used it a whole lot since. I just haven't been like reaching for it, but let's try it again. It has a really nice mister on it. It's organic and it looks like it has pretty basic ingredients in here, which I like. This I'm gonna use on top of my makeup too. I have a whole video testing out Amazon brushes and actually some of those brushes that I discovered in that video, I still use to this day, every single day. Skin is feeling a little bit more alive right now. It's not like a super dewy setting spray, but it definitely gave me a little bit of glow, which is nice. So the sponsored product for foundation was the Dermablend Flawless Creator Drops. I actually already had these. I have a whole video reviewing these if you wanna know my full thoughts on them. They are too light, which is good for mixing and with other foundations to lighten them. I have the shade N0, and they're also super matte. So I wanna try mixing this in with the Bourjois Healthy Mix serum foundation because this one is too dark and it's very dewy and I haven't reached for this a whole lot ever since doing the mixing all my foundations video. As I was going through all of those, I discovered so many foundations that I totally forgot I had. So I'm excited to whip all those out again and try them. These are hella liquidy. I think I need to remix that. It almost looks like oil just came out. I mean, I am full on shaking this thing. That looks like it lightened it pretty well. Let's see how this shade is. These drops really mattify you. My favorite kind of mix-in pigment foundation is the CoverFX Custom Cover Drops. If you like a glow and you like coverage, those are amazeballs. Off of that one layer, I'm getting medium coverage. Still have some on here, so I'm just gonna build it up a little bit. Doesn't really wanna build, it's kinda like wiping away. Not loving that combo, but it also doesn't look horrendous. So as I was searching for these products, I found a different product pops up for every kind of search term. So if you search, Concealer versus under eye concealer brings up obviously different results in different sponsored products because advertisers bid on certain words So I ended up getting this Maybelline brightening creamy concealer and fair. I've never tried this. So I'm kind of excited I'm really curious how this shade is gonna be. Okay. This looks pretty dark if it's way too dark I'm just gonna brighten this up with some powder Okay, let's try this with my finger first feels very thin and does feel pretty creamy. Bring this on the top of my lid too. It's pretty sheer. 
very sheer. It's like not really covering anything. It's actually darkening my under eyes. It's even looking way better on camera right now. I mean, it's like, whoa. Let's try to blend it out with a brush on the other side. This is my Morphe G38, best concealer brush of life. With a brush, it looks a bit more textured, but I feel like the coverage is a tiny bit better. I look like I haven't slept in 10 years. Okay. Do I try and salvage this with another concealer? Just realized I have one powder for all over the face, not really an under eye setting powder, so I can't even really brighten this up. So I think what I'm gonna do is apply a little bit of another concealer just to fix my under eyes right now, and then I'm gonna use the powder in here to set with the under eyes. Yeah, it's still like clinging weird on top of it. Okay, so this powder was, I think one of the only products that wasn't like a brand that you can find in the drugstore or somewhere else was like a true Amazon product or I've never seen it anywhere else. But this is the face powder we're gonna be trying. It's the Virgin Ink Translucent Botanical Face Powder. Cool packaging. Look at that, that's nice. Okay, definitely plastic, but it looks nice. So the powder, powder isn't super cheap. It was $18.97 marked down from $39.50. Okay, they just have like every keyword possible in the title. Loose matte setting foundation makeup, natural, great, nice smell for women, oily, dry skin. Who knows what this actually is? Okay, there is no sealant on this. It actually looks like there is a sealant on there right there. So I think the powder just seeped through some of the holes because they are open. So I think we're good to go. I will survive. That's like my motto of YouTube lately. It looks like it definitely has a tint to it and it looks like kind of a darker beige color. Not sure how that's gonna be for the under eyes, but first I'm gonna use that as an all over face setting powder. Here we go. Oh, that has a weird smell to it, dude. What does that smell like? <coughs> that smells like that powder I have for my coffee. What is that called? Okay, this 100% has a color to it and it's definitely darkening my face and also taking away some of the coverage. Maca powder, is that what it's called? It has like a nutty smell to it. Weird, weird scent, man. I mean, my face looks pretty makeup-y right now. You can like see the powder sitting on top and it is kind of emphasizing my texture. I wouldn't say this is a smoothing, blurring powder or anything. I like to keep right here without powder because it just makes dry skin look a lot healthier and not as dry and dead. On my monitor, it's actually looking like it matches, but it is quite dark, like at least two shades dark. So I definitely can't use this for under my eyes. My eyes are already majorly creasing. We need to brighten these things up. So I'm gonna quickly use my Physician's Formula powders. For 19 bucks, great plastic wood packaging, but that's about the only thing I like about this. Let's do some brows. So for brows, I got a Revlon product that I actually have never tried, I don't think. This is the Colorstay Brow Pencil in 220 Dark Brown. Drugstore brow products are always kind of a blur to me. They release so many all the time, they just start to melt together. Like, I very well may have already tried this. Oh, this is interesting. Look at this tip. I don't think I've ever seen a tip like this for a brow product. I'm gonna use the very tip right there because this is an interesting, design like this is an oval i guess i could use that for the very center you gotta use a really light hand with this because a lot of product is quickly coming off i'm gonna turn this to use the tip oh there we go Woo. that one went flying this is exactly what i always talk about that i don't like in brow products when it's just too pigmented and too smooth there's no grip to it so you can just get over obviously drawn on brow super quickly because of that. Why is it looking hella red in the front? <laughs> like it's literally looking purple or red. I feel like it's getting worse as I'm spooling it out. We're gonna leave it at that. Let's move on to this brow. Between the tip on this, which just doesn't make sense for an eyebrow shape, and then the color and the formula, hard pass, hard pass. For bronzer, I was kind of shocked that they're paying to promote this product because this is a hella old CoverGirl bronzer. To me, this is like old school CoverGirl. Don't really know why they're running ads on this product, but I bought it. So this is in Copper Radiance 102. I think they only had one shade on there or something. All right, I'm gonna use my Wet n Wild brush and I'm just dipping in. Not blending out the easiest and it's looking quite patchy. Could just be on top of that powder. Holy shit, sees. That looks like I literally just put a highlighter where I contour. I mean, that is not radiant, that is a highlighter. Lights are going down low for this one. Oh God. I don't think my bronzer has ever looked worse. If you had a deeper skin tone, of course you could use this as a highlight shade, but I would not recommend using this as bronzer whatsoever. 
no matter what your skin tone is just because of the finish of it. I mean, it's literally a highlighter. It doesn't seem to be blending in the easiest anywhere. I'm just blending this out with my powder brush. It's kind of like stuck wherever you plop it down. This one on the other hand though is actually one of my favorite blushes. I was super happy this was the sponsored product because I already have this in my collection. This is the Medium Rose by CoverGirl True Blend Blush. This is bomb. This is a great blush. I actually haven't used this in a while, but I want to say about a year ago, this was like my go-to blush. You guys have probably seen it in tons of videos if you've been watching for that long. The shade is just gorgeous. It gives you that like flushed pink kind of look. This one blends out easily and has a nice radiance to it where it's not a highlighter. It's just radiant. My under eyes are like crepe city over here. You could like hide something in there. The sponsored highlighter is actually one that I know I despise. Wow, we got a lot of like, <laughs> got a lot of duds so far. This is the Maybelline Master Chrome Metallic Highlighter. A lot of people love this. I find it looks like eyeshadow on your cheek. It totally emphasizes texture in my opinion. But hey, let's try it again. Maybe it'll look different. Oh man. Yeah, do you see? Face is looking rough today. It emphasizes every single pour an ounce of texture. I'm actually gonna try it with this Kat Von D brush to see if this kind of like diffuses it. I've been using this if I want just a sweep of highlight and I want it to be a little bit less concentrated. This is the, what brush is this, 25? Hopefully this kind of smooths it out a little bit maybe. I mean, it's definitely more diffused but I can't really see anything so I'm gonna add a bit more. Oy vey. I know a lot of people love this one. For me, it just does, does not work on my skin. There's a lot of blending happening today. All right, let's go in with some Bella Jade. Save the day, Bella. Hopefully this will kind of sink everything in, make my skin look less textured. Not a little bit different this time. I think I'm actually smelling that face powder. Oh, whoa. For some reason, it is like magnifying the scent of that face powder. I gotta go get that for you guys. Here's my maca powder. Maca, maca, matza. I swear it smells exactly the same and it even has the same color to it. I am confused. I think I just might've put maca powder on my face. Actually, that setting spray just massively helped my skin out. It definitely added a tiny bit of dew and it kind of just melted everything together a little bit. This one I'm super excited to try because I've never heard of this brand. It's the Elizabeth Mott Thank Me Later Eye Primer. Super cute packaging. It has this like gray and white situation. It's a little squeeze tube and it has this very soft matte kind of bottle. It looks like it has a little bit of like a light pink color to it. So it doesn't really have opaque color to it. Like this is definitely one that's gonna kind of rub off the concealer or whatever you put on top of your lid, but it has a nice consistency to it. It feels a little bit thick, which is what I usually actually like in an eye primer. We'll see how everything blends on top, but it feels like it has a really nice consistency to it. Now this kind of blended in, it feels like it's setting and it did give a little bit of brightness to the lid. When I searched for eyeshadow palette, the Maybelline Nudes eyeshadow palette came up and I know I have this somewhere, I could not find it. I literally searched through all of my drawers. I know it is somewhere, so instead we're gonna cheat a little bit and use the 24 nudes. Just another Maybelline palette and I don't actually remember what I think of this. Have I ever used this one? Kinda wanna do a gold eye. There's not really a transition shade in here and there's not a whole lot of matte colors to like work into your crease. Normally I would use my bronzer to do that. This does have the shimmer in it so it's not gonna be like a matte crease color but this is what we're working with. So I'm gonna blend this into the crease. I mean, even on the eyes, it looks like a shimmer shadow. On top of this eye primer though, it does have a nice stick to it. It almost feels like I'm using my MAC paint pot. I think to warm up my crease a little bit, I'm actually gonna take the blush and just put a dab of this in the crease. And I'm gonna take this gold shade on my finger and apply that to the lid. It almost looks like a cross between a copper and a gold. I'm gonna take this deep, deep brown shade because it looks like the only matte dark-ish shades in here are this one and then the dark blue. I'm gonna work this brown into the outer V. I'm liking this primer. I feel like the primer is actually doing something to these eyeshadows right now. For the inner corner, I'm gonna take a little bit of this white shade and actually kind of mix it with this taupey shade right here. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of the Master Chrome face highlight and put that right on the center. Oh yeah, there we go. Very pretty as an eyeshadow. I think I'm gonna come back to the lower lash line. Let's do eyeliner. This is the Revlon Color Skinny Liquid Liner. I don't think I've ever tried this. Kinda of just looks like a basic brush tip applicator. There are some interesting sound sounds coming from upstairs right now. I hope you guys are hearing this. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm holding my mic up. 
These are the same people who do gymnastics every night. I don't think that's aerobic exercise happening anymore. Eyeliner. This is a very flimsy brush applicator, so this has taken a lot of concentration. Instead of doing a wing, I think I'm actually gonna take a flat edge brush as this is still wet and kind of do a little smudge action here. With the applicator, it gives you kind of those jagged edges, so I'm just kind of smoothing this out too. Just for what I like in eyeliner, I probably wouldn't use this again because it's just totally flimsy, so it's a little bit hard to control it. Let's take the dark brown on the flat edge brush and just run this on like the outer third. Now I'm gonna go in with the same, where did it just go? Maybelline Master Chrome is on the loose. What the heck, man? Oh, here it is. I'm gonna run that just kind of on the center slash bring this all the way in, I guess. I'm gonna wet that with a setting spray just to get a little extra pop. The mascara that popped up was the CoverGirl Total Tees. Uh, you guys know how I feel about this mascara. I have the brown one, so that's what we're gonna be using. This wand is just why. The little ball thing on the end is just a little redix. So I'm turning it the other way just so I can get it without the ball. I haven't used brown mascara in a while. I'm kind of liking the brown shade. This is inspiring me to whip out a different brown mascara because I do feel like it's kind of making my eyes pop a little. I don't think I'm gonna put on false lashes today. I kind of just want to keep it at this. The same mascara for my bottom lashes. Let's try and use the ball. Oh, no, not no ball. I just want to chop off this ball. All right, I do like the brown color. Like I said, I want to reach for another brown mascara. It's kind of exciting. So for lipstick, I was kind of bummed. I just got a boring Revlon lipstick. I was hoping I was gonna get like an obscure Amazon brand. The shade that came up was 225 Rose Wine. So that is what I went with. I don't smell anything. Didn't get a lip liner. So I'm just gonna try and do this with that one. Whenever I do this, if I'm not using a lip liner, I'll just turn the lipstick to use the tip to kind of draw on that line as you would with a lip liner. That shade is super pretty. It's bright, but a still wearable rose shade. I feel like it's looking a little bit more orange or bright on camera. This I feel like would be a perfect kind of spring red where it has a little bit of that warmth to it. Oh, I don't know, should I put them on? Look how crazy of a difference false eyelashes make. So this is the final look using all products that Amazon recommended that I buy, sponsored ad products. I feel like the vast majority were duds this time around. Things that I would use again, the setting spray. The primer, I think I'm most pleasantly surprised by. And just the way they blended out, there's something about it that I really enjoyed. So I would use the Thank Me Later primer again. I'm gonna keep trying this out. I think those were kind of the only things out of this one that I found okay or good. We had a lot of rejects this time around, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video idea. If you did and you enjoyed watching, don't forget to give this a thumbs up. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. If you're already subscribed, you can turn on the bell. It'll notify you when I upload. YouTube also recently changed the subscription feed, so make sure your subscription feed, subscription feed is set to chronological order not the highlights because you're not seeing all of the videos that are coming through that people are uploading. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.